Now, everybody out there knows I stand for Brian. He can never do no wrong. But that was up until this week's episode, and we got this ensemble. It's a no for the whole world, fat. Take it off. Get the music! Oh, yes, bitches and hoes. I'm back. back. I drop a play you like it's nothing. It ain't working out. Now, no debate or fuck discussion, bitch. I'm walking out. I'm walking My dial is money. I ain't loving. Let you toss it out. Flip my weave and walk it out. Look how I just bossed it out. Now, come on, baby. Why you bugging? We can't talk it out. I keep it moving. I ain't tripping. Lost another spouse. I'm just a boss. It's in my blood. No, I won't scream or shout. Grabbing my key. Cause oh yes, bitches and hoes, I'm back. Back with another video and I feel like it's been a long time. I think the last video I made was Sunday. Where all the TV shows went off? Lord, Snowfall went off. Shoot, I don't know, Atlanta just too difficult to cover. I'm over ready to love. I'm just ready to, <clears throat> like I don't know. I gotta find some more shows to get on y'all cause I feel like it's been a while, but hey y'all. Anyway, we back with another video, and this is Candy in the Gang, episode 9. Um, my baby Brian is getting his due as he should. Mm-hmm. Just so you know, he's getting his due with his egg roll business, but we gonna get into it. So the episode opens up with Mama Joyce is telling them she got her watch, and she spent 70 decades with her sisters. I, meant she, I think she meant to say she spent 70 years. Because 70 decades, that's like 700 years. Don't quote me on the map, but it's not 70. You know what I mean? But we're going to let Mama Joyce pass because that's Mama Joyce. That's how she grew. Um, Aunt Nora goes on to say that Mama Joyce is the best baby sister she could ever ask for. She has done no wrong. She's just perfect in everybody's eyes. And I'm birth to say, I wouldn't say all that. Now, listen, if y'all want to know who's going to tell the truth, I'm birth going to tell the truth, whether you ask for it or not. I'm Bertha say I wouldn't say all that. Now you're doing too much. As you should, I'm Bertha. Because Mama Joyce is alive. Maybe she is good to her sister. I love to see it. I wish I, I wish that I had sisters that I could grow old with. That is so dope to me. So we move to the next scene. Philip goes to, up to Brian and tells Brian he enjoyed his singing at the doggone um, house standing. Because it wasn't a housewarming. And I'm just like, okay, Philip. Okay. Because even Brian was just like, oh. Philip is starting to come around, and I love this because Philip, you are too cute and handsome. Number one, and number two, you don't have to do all that. You catch more flies with sugar than you do with shit. That's what the old folks used to say. So I mean, Philip, you know, like, listen, people gonna respect you because they they fuck with you. They not gonna respect you because of fear. No, no king has ever ruled the kingdom out of just fear for the people. It's mostly out of respect. So I think that is so dope that they're getting along. Philip gets in his confessional and says he feels like he's becoming a part of the family now and the um, build, team building event really helped. I told y'all the team building events be working. Because once you get out of that work setting and that work environment, you can get into a space where y'all can enjoy each other, have fun, nothing be so serious and actually work together. That's the whole point of team building. So I'm loving the fact that they are back on the same page. Um, Brian tells Philip, oh, I like this Philip. I don't know about the other one though. And Philip, how oh, the other one's still in here. Don't get it twisted. See, that's the Philip we can respect. When you need to turn up, you turn up and everybody shuts down. But when you don't need to and it's not necessary, Philip, <sighs> you just came full circle and I'm here for it. We move to the next scene. Patrick is sitting down with, I believe it's Melvin Torrin. I don't know. No, I think it's just Melvin and Torrin. I can't remember. But child, he introduces his line of body oils. You know, black people like earls. I'm from New Orleans. We don't say oils. And that's why it's so hard for me to say it. We say earls. So, but this the episode is going to be earls. So Patrick introduced his line of body earls called Poo Confidence. I get it. It's French. It's spelled a certain way. I'm with it. But it's poo. Apparently, poo confident is somebody who's confident within themselves. But poo, this is America. Your Earl is going to be called poo, so people going to want to rub poo all over them. Mm-hmm. Anyway, he, he lets Torin know that his photographer dropped out, and he needs Torin to help him to set up the dog on photo shoot. Now, this is my thing. Patrick, you sure go to Torrin for everything. Torrin, you need to start charging at this point. Because he got he got coin. 
can then give it to him. You need to start charging. But then he lets everybody know that since his photographer dropped out, Safari's going to be the dog on photographer. And Soren gets in his dog on confession and says, she a photographer? Oh, I ain't know she did that. That girl a jack of all trades. She like a Swiss army knife. Listen, one thing Safari going to do is support her man. Going to support him. She going to support him. If she got to get down in the dirt with her man, she going to do that. And you know, that gives me the idea and it lends the idea that maybe it is a good idea that Patrick marries Safari. Because she, if she, she might be mean, she might have the rest in bitch face and she do. But one thing she will do is stand by her man. Stand by your man. And she should. But yeah, she the photographer. Look, I'm here for a child. Now, I don't know how the pictures gonna come out, but go ahead on support your man, girl. Support him. And I'm gonna stick beside him. Anyway, um... So, now we move to the next scene. Brian, Torn, Dominique, and Drika are eating lunch. I love to see that Dominique and Drika are back friends. That's restaurant fighting. It's like y'all are sisters. Ugh, whatever. You still got to work with the girl. So, what's the point in beefing? You know what I'm saying? So, but they all are back friends. Drika says that even though they have their ups and downs, they still family. You are. I love to see it. So, they all out there eating lunch. And, um... Torin lets them know about the poo confidants. Mm-hmm. And they go, what? Poo confidant, it's the Earls that Patrick got. Everybody's like, this dude done lost his mind. Who the hell trying to put shit on him? And that's what I was trying to find out. So they goes to looking in, um, well, he lets them know he's going to help them with the event and the photography and all that stuff. And I guess everybody's going to be a part of it. But they go to looking and Googling people to see what they were like. And here we run across and find Philip was a model. I'm talking about a Gap or American Eagle level model. Phil, baby, you looked it good. Now, listen, you get on my nerves. Lord knows you do. And you're coming around. I might start liking you. But at the end of the day, Philip, you look damn good. And you give me model. You give me face, body, every time you step into the room. So it don't shock me. Everybody else shocked, but they were even more shocked by the name he went by called Kowasi or Kwasi or whatever it was. So they like, what? Philip had a whole nother identification. What? Kowasi? Is it Philip or is it Quincy? And I'm sitting, I'm here for a child. Look, them photos was off the chain. But once they find out about that, they are all set. And you know, Brian, we'll get into that later. We move to the next scene. Brian and Melvin uh, meet up at the food truck. So, okay. Brian is getting ready to launch his business. He wants to launch his business. He said he's only been in, um, in works for maybe like six months. But he's making grown adult money off of this business. I am here for it. Listen, you don't have to be done worked out your kitchen for five years. Fat. If you want a truck, go get you a truck. So they're out there at the food truck park and they're going to try different stuff and they want to kind of like get an idea of what's going, what he wants for his food truck. First of all, I love and I stand the fact that Melvin came because Melvin is the cook. Melvin is, is a chef, you know, essentially. And his his opinion on the food truck and all the stuff that he's trying to do for his business, that is huge. And I love that they support each other and that Melvin was able to come out with him to go look at some stuff. They um went to this one food truck called Cafe Bourbon Street or something like that. Now, if you're from New Orleans, shout out, girl. But shout out to you because you're black anyway. But you know they be having a lot of impostors. Mm -hmm. But she had some, um, what she had, jambalaya egg rolls. That sounds like a lot of starch, but I tried. And then, um, yeah, Brian ordered that and then Melvin ordered, um... What was it? Uh, Burger Street shrimp or something like that. It all sound really good. So as they're waiting on their food, they go to walk around the food truck and they um the food trucks. I'm sorry, and they run across this one um truck. I believe it was Taco Mac or Mac and Cheese or something like that truck. And he was able, Brian was able to get up on the truck and look at the truck because the guy was like, oh yeah, you know, it cost you about seventy k to get a truck. And Brian was like, oh lord, seventy k. Listen, Brian, I get it. It's a lot of money up front that. It's going to look bad. It's going to feel bad in your pockets and in your soul. But when that revenue start hitting, because one thing about a food truck, all you got to do is be available. The people going to eat. You got to know the people going to eat. And you got a product that everybody wants to see what the hell going on. Soul food egg rolls, child, please, give me a whole order of all of them. And, oh, Lord. But Brian is shocked at all the work and all the stuff. He's telling them, hey, look, you know, when you wash dishes, you go to, I forget the name of the place, a commissary or whatever it is, where the food trucks go. Giving them the ropes of everything. Um, Brian is intimidated, but he's still gung-ho about it. They sit down, him and Melvin, to get their food. 
And Melvin is basically here for it. Melvin is pushing him. Melvin is like, listen, I think you should go for it and do it, bro. Like, you can only, you're going to only go up. And he's boosting him up, putting all this confidence in him. I love Melvin. Melvin is a real teddy bear. But I still believe I'm Bertha when she said he a kick ties ass. Because it be the teddy bears that be like that. Let's move on. We move to the next scene. Philip is looking for more employees. He need, a, he need more bartenders for sure. He's going to go on Indeed and look for more employees. But he's talking to Don Juan and, and pitches the idea of promoting Drica, Sandrica, and what have you, um, to a head mater D in the restaurant. Don Juan was like, wait, what, who? Drica? And this is what I love about Philip. He's very impartial when it comes to the facts and reality. Philip says she has really stepped it up dramatically since our first encounter. Like, she's really been busting her behind. And I think that a, a promotion for her would be great. Even Don Juan was taking it back. But see, Don Juan, you looking at the personality. I get it. Because Drica, you got a lot going on. But I feel like with more responsibility, Drica going to do well. Because she's already conforming to her role and making sure everything is good. She be running food and all that stuff. We've seen it. Um, running food is just basically bringing food to the table. I'm really here for Drica. I, girl, I support black women anyway. So, get your promotion. Don Ryan's concern is what is Candy and Ty going to think? And he was like, well, you know, we could pitch it to him. We could try it out at first. But let's just, you know, give... Give that thought an idea or give that idea some thought, if it makes sense. So I'm here for um, Drinker getting her um, her raise, as she should. We move to the next scene. Dominique, Dominique, I'm sorry, goes to dance practice. And she talks about how she wasn't sure about her dance career when um, that Rona hit. You feel me? She didn't know what was going to happen. You know, everybody thought the world was going to end. We wasn't going to never be able to come back outside. But apparently it got canceled. The Rona got canceled. That's what they said. I don't hear nothing else about it. That's all I'm saying. But yeah, um, girl, your, your dad's business is going to be fine. We back outside. She's happy that she's going on this tour with Rick Ross. The dance instructor lets them know that it's an international tour, which we already know because they're going to be in London. But I'm wondering if that means they're going to go from different places or are they just going to be in London? Probably different places. But this is huge for Dominique. She said her goal was to, be, to dance for Beyonce, but she don't mind dancing for the biggest boss. Ricky Ross. As you shouldn't. I love Rick Ross music. His music gives me symphony vibes. I just, I, I stand Rick Ross's music. So yeah, girl, you, you got your feet in the door, fat. Walk right on through. So we move to the next scene. Torrin is setting up for the photo shoot. It's the day of the photo shoot for Pooh Confident. Confident shit is what it sounds like. But he's setting up and saying, look, he, it's a free event. They ain't paying them. So he left Beyonce, which is the plant that, you know, everybody likes, the big, beautiful plant. She stayed home because he didn't bring, Patrick didn't give him enough money to have Beyonce come out. But he did bring Kelly and Michelle. Okay, we'll take it because it's free. That's all you can do. So now everybody starts to arrive. Patrick and Safari arrives. Everybody's coming in. And it's, it's time to get ready for this photo shoot. Ciao. When everybody gets in them, um, I'm sorry. As all of this is happening, Patrick gets in his confessional and says that seeing how Safari is helping him and how she's going to be his ride or die, that makes him know he's making the right decision. I agree with you on that, Patrick. You get on my nerves, but I agree with you. Child, they start taking the photos. Patrick looked like a goofy damn fool in his photos. I don't know if it's the way his... He got like a little smirk. I don't know. It's just like, bro, relax your jaws and your, your face muscles and just get face. Don't be. That's how Patrick looked in his doggone um, photo. Ciao. Hated it. Anyway, Patrick looked goofy. Um, Don Juan looked weird with the taco meat. Hell, even Tori had to let him know. If I had known you had that, I would have told you to shave that off. Don Juan give me taco meat. He looked it crazy. Hated it. Philip is killing it, baby. Philip, they got Philip looking in the mirror, gazing with his pajama shirt open in the earl all over his body. Baby, Philip is killing it. I am so sorry about that doggone. It sound like my neighbor cutting grass. But I'm sorry about that, y'all. So, yes, Philip is killing the game. As he should and as he does, as we know from his latest photo that we found on the Google. Kowasi is killing the game, baby. Leaning into the mirror. Giving face and body. Body, yaddy, 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 With his poo earl. 
as he should. So, child, we move on to the next person because I love that Philip is killing it. Candy is uh, arriving, her and um, her and Todd. And Todd takes his photos, but Candy is rubbing the pool earl all over his body. Mm-hmm. Aunt Bertha said, because OLG didn't arrive, they said, oh, Aunt Bertha said, I didn't know this was a half stripper. <laughs> we was going to have half strippers. Baby, Ty killed the photo shoot. I ain't gonna lie. Ty just did good. Ty looked real good. You're so little. If you, you Ty, I ain't gonna go there. You, you did good. You killed it. So now, Patrick shows Candy the Earl, the poor Earl, and calls it Pooh Confidant. Candy hates the name. Candy was just like, boy, why are you calling it that? He was like, because this is what it means. She was like, yeah, but I don't know about the name, Patrick. Thank God somebody said something. You got to get a better name, Pooh Confidant. I mean, I'm just sorry. Because people going to start calling your Earl shit. Because I know that's what I be calling it. Shit. I'm just saying. His slogan is, I am confident in my skin. You should be Pooh. Enough said. Um... Candy, like Candy said, that pool part reminds her of shit. It reminds everybody of shit. The next scene, Drika pulls up, but she's not in her matte black bins. She's in the Honda Accord. Let me find out y'all went to 360 Reno or somewhere and got a car just for the stunt for the show. Drika, why you ain't pulling up in your bins? Now, I get it you said you don't be driving, but it just, it, it, it kind of gave me a little, mm -hmm. We trying to figure out if you really own the car set. But anyway, she pulls up in her Honda Accord and meets Brian outside. Brian is wearing a shirt that has Coasey's or Philip old model photo on it. I am here for it. He gave her one. He actually has shirts for everybody. So when Brian walks in, everybody's like, what is that? And then Philip is just like, you got me on my shirt, on your shirt. I know that I thought Philip would have been mad and tried to make a big deal out of it. But I love that Philip actually was okay and played along with it. Philip, you, I'm starting to like you. I'm not liking you yet, but I'm starting to. I'm going to give you some more time because you know how you is. But, Philip, I am starting to like you. Thanks for being a team player and, and being able to take a joke. It's not that serious. I love that Philip was in on it. So, everybody's shocked that um he has this shirt. And the shirt says, I'm crazy in love or something like that. But it's the play on words with Quasi or whatever his name. And they asked him, did he model? And he said, yeah, he did back in the day. He was signed to an agency. I love to hear it. Um, so now it's time for Drika to take her photos. Oh, Lord. So, okay. Drika is going to get ready. Safari wants to give Drika a red lip. Shout out to Drika and Safari for working together and not having no beef. Because guess what? That heifer wouldn't have been able to tell me nothing after she let me come into her party. But I wouldn't have came anyway. But shout out to them for um, being able to work together. And um, she wants to give Drika this red lip. So, Torin goes help them and um, Drika, no, Safari asks Drika, hey, do you have a red lip? And she goes, no. She was like, I'll give you some of mine. Now, this pop props Todd to go, wait, they sharing lipstick? Candy said, well, child, they lips been in the same place. I'm going to stop you when you start lying. Go ahead on, Candy. Child, I fell through the flu. Listen, it makes all the sense in the world. But anyway, Drika gets down on the floor, takes her photos, and kills it. Drika is a beautiful girl. Might I add... Drinka, when you was up there with uh, Torin and them and you turned around and walked that ass. Ooh, girl, and it look real. You look good, Drinka. You get on my nerves, but you look good, fat. Um, yeah, Drinka's photos were amazing. She's a very beautiful girl. Safari was even into taking her picture. Now, I don't know if she's going to get jealous later, but she looked like she was there supporting. So, I'm all here for it. And that's another thing. You can invite the girl to, to support the business and take photos for the business, but she can't come in the house. I don't know. I, that's how I be thinking. Maybe it's a negative way of thinking. Philip, it's, it's time for, um, I'm sorry, not Philip. It's time for Brian and everybody else to take their photos. And uh, basically, Patrick tries to get into the confessional and say that he supports the LGBTQ plus community. But he could not get it amongst, get it out of his mouth to spell letters. He was saying L, B, C, G, Q, T, everything but the way it is. <sighs> Let's move on, Patrick. It's just so you. But Patrick is saying that he's very supportive of it. And I'm here for it. Because listen, a confident man, a straight confident man, he don't have to be projecting and yelling and all that stuff and feeling all uncomfortable or saying he's feeling uncomfortable in front of uh, homosexual people. Because guess what, Fat? They don't want you. So I'm here for the fact that everybody can coincide. Brian took his photos and he can't do no wrong. So I'm going to leave it like that. Rashad, you look like a preteen. I'm not here for it. 
Let's move on. Candy and Ty and um Don Juan and uh Brandon, not Brandon. Why don't they ever invite Brandon? Philip, I'm sorry. They are hiring for bartenders. It makes sense. I wouldn't invite Brandon either. I don't think he'd have input. But they meet because they're looking for new bartenders. Ciao. So, the interview the first girl, and she said she'd been serving since she was 15. Not bartending, but serving. But I'm pretty sure she'd do very well behind the bar if she's been doing all that. The second girl, um, they asked her what would she do if somebody had a fake ID. The girl said, look, I'll just give it back and say, I can't take this your ID fake. That sounds like me when I used to be a server. Baby, this fake. Uh-uh. Boy, uh -uh. you're not about to get me in trouble. Like the girl said, I could get in trouble. Ain't about to do it. Bye. Child, the third candidate is Phillips. Oh, wait, hold up. Child, the third candidate is Phillips' brother's old lady. That's what we call him in New Orleans. That's his old lady, his brother old lady. But the problem is, girl outside throwing up because she hung over. Philip had to go check on her, tell her to get her shit together because he trying to get her a job. Now, I ain't gonna lie. I fucks with Philip because Philip say, look, I'm looking out for my family like everybody looking out for this. As you should. But God damn, girl, you show up drunk. Girl, the girl sit down at the interview, child. And lo and behold, she starts cussing in the interview because I think that shit crazy. And da, 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 da. Ty has this look of surprise and shock, but also laughter because he couldn't believe this is a real person in the interview. Candy ain't here for it. Philip is trying to hold his composure because he like she really is messing this up. I done got the girl in the door, but it ain't gonna work. Down line don't want hear nothing. Listen, oh, uh, I get it. You trying to look out for your family, but she can't get hired. Candace said she lost me at the cousin. Child, she lost me when she came in drunk. That's what that's just my opinion. But I don't think Candace knew she was drunk. Um, we move to the next scene. Todd goes to Brian's house. He actually hit Brian up and wanted to talk about investing in his company. So cool, Egg Rose. This is the scene that's behind me. Now, Brian, you were like Ty said, you're a peculiar guy. You have your own style and your own fashion. But this was not it, Fat. I don't know, Fat. You can't do no wrong because it works for you. But I don't think it works for the TV. So I would have kept this look, you know, for the girls. Because the TV girls didn't want to, we didn't want to see that Fat. I, I, you know, let me, wait, let me get your hand. I know. I'm sorry. I don't mean, I don't mean to do you dirty, Brian. I love you, but this wasn't the look, Prince. This just wasn't it. But anyway, off of Brian's look, because he can't do no wrong. Can't, up until you. But yeah, Todd comes in. Brian has this whole entire presentation ready for Todd. He has the laptop out. He gave him a business plan, a projection. He let him taste the egg rolls. He had them all set out, different types. I'm talking about, he had, he even introduced his cheesecake eggs roll, egg rolls. I'm not really into dessert, but that shit sounds good. Listen, Ty was even impressed. Ty was like, wow, he really put this together in such a short period of time. So I'm guessing he hit up Brian last minute and was like, hey, I want to come over and talk to you about the company. Now, this is where it gets tricky. So after he lets him try all the stuff and presents the plan, Brian wants to offer him, well, get, make a loan for 100%, 100,000, I'm sorry, 100%. Make a loan for 100,000 and uh, offer him 20% of the business. Ty wants 50. I get it. Ty feels like you're not putting up no money. Shit go bad, I'm out of $100,000. I get it. But I'm with Brian on this. This is my baby. I created it. I'm not sure about giving away half of it. I don't blame you. Baby, look, go get you an SBA, PPP. Go down to your bank, see if they'll give you a loan. Child, go get a credit card. Do something. But don't give no, don't give away 50% of your business. I get it because Ty was like, look, I, I can put you up in a location. That's not what he wants. He wants a food truck. He was like, I can get you up and running in six months. It's just up to you to figure out what you want to do. But the stakes are too high. I get it. I get it. Trust me, I get it. But I would rather owe the bank than to give somebody 50% of my business. That's just me. I'm sorry. That's just me. I I don't know what to say. Y'all let me know if y'all think 50% is, is good for loaning him $100,000. Because at, at, at the end of the day, he's going to give it back. I guess it was a loan. I don't think he was asking to give it to him, right? Child, you better go get you a PPP and get it for free, free, free. Okay. 
Um, and your business will be legit, so you will fall in the category to not have to pay it back. I'm just saying, I hope that's what you did, because I know this show was filmed back in 2020. So we move to the next scene. Drika and Torin put, a, put together a going away for Dominique. It's a surprise going away. And they have two of her closest friends there as well. So Brandon and Dominique pulls up, and um, they're on this pedal, um, what is it called? Like a pedal bus ride i don't know where you pedal and the people be drinking and smoking hookah and all that stuff they got them in atlanta um but they pull up on dominique and surprise her dominique is super surprised she says she loves activities and thought it was really sweet that they put this together so they sit down on this thing they go to talking and basically dominique we meet her her friend ricky ricky she said it's like her brother you know, women use that term loosely. <laughs> but we meet Ricky and we find out that how she met Ricky was her mom died at 14 from walking pneumonia. And Ricky and his family basically took her in and basically raised her the rest of the way. That Those type of people are people that you, those are your family. Because blood don't automatically make your family. And that's a fact. Those are the type of people that you need in your corner. Especially when it comes to, you know, who, who, are, who you have around you and who's for you well ricky goes to ask brandon what's his intentions with his sister as he should and brandon answered it perfectly he said i want to have a family i'm here for it definitely here for it Bra brian said not brian brandon says that that's what he came from that's the dynamic he's always known and that's what he wants with his girl now dominique is over there saying that she hopes that her going on this tour don't make brandon feel no type of way because he don't have nothing to worry about she love her man she ain't gonna cheat and whatnot you better than me but yeah she just don't want to um you know lose what she got with brandon i think they they are good together they good um we move to the next scene oh no before we move to the next scene Torrin invites everybody out to Friday Night Vibes. That's something he pitched to Candy Tide and Don Juan and Philip and all them. And basically, he's bringing back Friday Night Vibes. He wants everybody to come and say his job depends on the people that's going to show out. So he's like, invite your friends, invite your mama, your daddy, everybody. Have everybody come down there. It's going down. We need y'all at Friday Night Vibes. I wish you would have known me and emailed me. I'd have gave you my number, Torrin. I would have came to Friday Night Vibes. I'm like 45 minutes away. Okay. Anyway, so we move to the next scene. Patrick is asking Safari's dad for her hand in marriage. Okay, so Safari drops her daddy off. They at this golf cart, this golf club. I'm sorry. Patrick is talking to Drika's, not Drika's, God, to Safari's dad, and basically, um, he kind of had a little trouble at the at the beginning trying to hit the ball, but once he got it, he got it in stride. Okay, so now Patrick basically says, "Hey." I, I'm your daughter's boyfriend, but I don't want to be that anymore. I want to be her husband. You know, what do you think about that? And the daddy was just like, I mean, if that's what she wants. Because, child, we find out the daddy is a Marine, or uh, ex-Marine. Well, no, they don't like saying ex. A Marine, he was a jarhead, his words. He also said that he was a boxing uh, person. He did boxing in the uh, military. He even fought with Joe Frazier. I don't know if he fought Joe Frazier or fought with him. He was an Olympian. Like the man is accomplished. And even Patrick had to say, I'm not scared of him, but I'm scared we could do what he could do to me. Yeah, he could probably still kick your ass, Patrick. But when he asked for the hand in marriage child, the dad was like, well, if that's what she like it, I love it. Shit. I mean, whatever. If that's what she want. Patrick is a little bit perplexed because he was like, hey, I'm literally asking you for your daughter's hand. Just say yay or nay. So then Patrick rephrases the question again and goes, hey, I want to get your approval. Is it okay if I marry your daughter? Do, can I have her hand in marriage? And uh, Pop stood on his square and said, if she want to marry you, I'm going to support her. That means to me, you know, um, he ain't really hit feeling it, but he's just going to do whatever so far as he Child, look, this was the end of the episode. I, I like this episode. It was really nice. Don't you want to go to the place to be with mac and cheese and lima beans? Don't you and your family want to hang with Kenny and the gang? That was my little rendition. Girl, yeah, y'all drop down in the comments and let me know. That, that theme song is fire. I'm sorry, it is. It's tight. Y'all drop down in the comments and let me know what y'all thought about this week's episode of Candy in the Game. I cannot wait for Real Housewives of Atlanta. I am a diehard housewife family. I started with the very beginning, so this is going to be lit. Um, Anyway, that's off subject. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Yeah. 
and I'll see you all later. Bye.